Have you ever met someone and you can clearly see they are out of their depth? They haven't a clue what they're talking about. And yet, they seem to speak with such confidence and authority. Or maybe someone who tells you how emotionally intelligent and self-aware they are. And yet, they just keep on misreading the room. Well, this could be what's known as the Dunning-Kruger effect. Back in 1999, two Cornell scientists named David Cunning and Justin Kruger, they ran some experiments where they tested students on things like grammar, logic, and even humor. But after the tests, they asked the students how they thought they did. And what they found were the students who scored in the bottom quarter didn't just think they did okay. They thought they had performed really well. What Dunning and Kruger found was this is because the skills you need to be good at something are the same skills you need to recognize how good or maybe not so good you are. In other words, incompetence can lead people to make mistakes, but that same incompetence can blind them to realize they are making mistakes. And that awareness, that ability to think about your own thinking is called metacognition. Without it, you might just be making things up as you go along and yet be convinced that you're right. So to illustrate the Dunning-Kruger effect, imagine someone maybe enrolling in a class because they want to learn a new skill or a new subject. And they grasp the concept and maybe after one or two classes, they learn something really interesting, really useful, even pick up on a few phrases or terms. Now they might not necessarily think they know more than the experts, but they think they've got a pretty good handle on it. In reality though, they've no real idea of any complex theories there may be behind it and no concept of how much more there is to learn about it. And yet, they believe they have it all figured out. If you will, they've climbed a hill, and they think they've reached the summit of what there is to know, but they're unaware of their own ignorance about what they don't yet know. And this peak of false confidence is rather unfortunately known as Mount Stupid. We have all seen this false, sometimes diluted confidence at some point, and if we were honest, well, we even felt it ourselves at times. Now some might continue with that class or whatever it was to continue learning, but they find out there's a lot more to it than they thought. It's a bit more complex than they realized. So some might quit because they just lose motivation. Some might quit due to a lack of confidence. Some might quit because maybe they're just bored with it and something else seems more interesting. But some might think they've learned all there is to know about it and anything else is irrelevant. We tend to meet people like this all the time. It's the person who overestimates their competence and their experience. They can give the daftest advice based on a little bit of knowledge. They can assure you they're an expert, they're brilliant at something, and they promise to sort something out, only to stumble around, sometimes make things worse. They are overly confident, yet often deluded. And those who have it the worst are least likely to ever know it. Because, to paraphrase John Cleese, to realize how unintelligent you are would require a level of intelligence. But another interesting aspect to the Dunning-Kruger effect is that it works the other way too. Because where you see some people overestimate their knowledge and their skills, there are those who are genuinely good at what they do. They have a good understanding of something, but they can underestimate themselves. In their research, Dunning and Kruger found that the top performing students didn't brag about their performance. Rather, they assumed they had done worse than they actually had. And many people who are genuinely skilled, talented or knowledgeable tend to be aware that there are things, even in their chosen field, that they don't know, things that they could be better at. In some cases, they even doubt themselves. And this can be an aspect of what's commonly referred to as imposter syndrome. For instance, if something comes easy to them, they might just assume anyone could do it so it's not that big a deal. However, if something comes easy to them and others are struggling with it, they might feel like there's something they've missed or maybe there's something they're doing wrong. So just like those who overestimate themselves, their self-perception is off. And in some cases, it can hold them back from putting themselves forward, even doubting themselves whenever they do succeed. But the similarity in all these cases is the distance between how good people think they are and how good they really are. And what the research shows is that being skilled or having knowledge about something isn't just about knowing what you know, but being aware of your limits and recognizing there is always more to learn. Now, where I think the Dunning-Kruger effect takes another twist 
is whenever it's co-occurring with that sense of superiority and arrogance that is often seen with narcissistic personality. We see people who can be loud, arrogant, speak with a lot of confidence about things they know little about, but they can be very convincing and will not be challenged. We see the person who goes into hospital and starts advising their surgeon on how to best perform the operation. A politician who talks loudly and confidently about complex problems with only a surface level understanding of what's really going on and they're not open to any new information. We see people who aren't just annoying, but they can be very good at shutting down any opposition, make people question their own reality with their nonsensical reasoning. Even the person who auditions on the talent show they believe that the next big thing they stroll out onto that stage with such confidence. And yet, as soon as they start singing, they sound more like they're falling down the stairs. They couldn't hold a single note. And they do not take the feedback well. And quite often, due to those narcissistic traits, in many cases, they tend to double down. They persist in their arrogance and their flawed evaluation of themselves even whenever they're presented with reality. And when these people get into positions of responsibility or are even just rewarded for their arrogance, chaos usually tends to follow. They make terrible decisions, often refusing to listen to anyone who is more qualified or more experienced. And this is where the Dunning-Kruger effect shows that confident incompetence can easily drown out experience and expertise. And when people are ignorant of their own lack of skill and knowledge, this can kill their growth and hinder their productivity. And where there is narcissism as well, they often choose to remain in their ignorance, and some can even become spiteful and vindictive. Now the good news is, even though all of us have experienced the Dunning-Kruger effect at some point in our lives, it isn't a life sentence. Rather, it's just a bias. It's a bias we can all have, but it can be challenged with just a little bit of self-awareness and humility. And one way to do this is to ask people you trust for their honest, constructive criticism. Not just those who'll tell you what you want to hear or those who will just criticise you no matter what. Those whose opinions you trust. Because getting an outside view or seeking clarity is one of the best ways to recalibrate how you see yourself. And it's okay to say that you don't know something. Be comfortable with admitting it. Because this isn't a sign of weakness. Rather, it's a sign of honesty. If you're not certain of something, then just ask. I often think a good sign of self-confidence is maybe being the only person in a room full of so-called experts, the only person who asks, could you explain that in simpler terms, please? What you might find is there's a lot of people in the room don't understand it either, but they're just smiling and nodding. Next, assume that you don't know everything. Now, we might know things that other people don't, but then they might know things that we don't. So stay curious. And stay a student. Because the more you learn about something, the more you might understand that it can be complex. And this can help create intellectual humility. Because real experts, they know that there are gaps in their knowledge and they're always trying to fill them. Lastly, for those who underestimate themselves, pay attention to your talents, your skills and your accomplishments. If you believe that you only did well at something just because you got lucky, well try to remember that even if luck was involved, you still had to play your part in it. If you ever notice, the harder you work, the luckier you get. So, in conclusion, the work of Dunning and Kruger shows that wisdom and experience doesn't just come from self-assuredness and arrogance. It comes from learning, understanding, and questioning ourselves, as well as others. Now, if anyone wants to learn more about this, I will add the research in the description of this video. But do let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. There are some interesting conversations start from these videos. I'm Darren McGee, and if you find this topic to be interesting, please consider subscribing to my channel. And until next time, thanks for watching.